You know those days when you just wanna play TF2 but absolutely nothing goes your way, and by the time you finally notice it, and try to change a server, all your free time is gone? Do you ever feel jealous of the people who are actually good at the game, enjoying it and having fun? Well fear not for today I will teach you how to get back at society by equipping specific loadouts in TF2 that just lets you sap all the fun from everyone in your server, including your teammates, just to watch the world burn. But before we actually get into the loadouts, let's first talk about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow. Let's first talk about some miscellaneous rules in general to follow when using the loadouts, for maximum fun deleting. They are, cap in CTF and high tower, always hog teleporters, kill friendlies, steal health kits, spam medic and other annoying voice commands, and if you are really committed to it, equip and use the Swissmas noise maker while standing in front of snipers to obstruct their view. I learned this from Ouija Putis and Amp, Ray, by the way. Make sure you check out his channel, link in the description. Number 1, The Scout. For The Scout, the Force of Nature is the best option because not only does it have a fast fire rate so you can get in, unload your ammo and immediately get out, it also gives the enemy knockback and lets you use the terrain to your advantage, potentially knocking them off a cliff and insta-killing. It also gives you some extra mobility to get around and dodge enemy fire. Pair that with the Criticola and you can do some serious damage, and therefore knock back. The frying pan is the perfect choice for Scout's melee because his extra swing speed amplifies its already loud and obnoxious hit sound, so that's what we'll use. When using this loadout, Try to drink the Criticola and utilize the Force of Nature jumps and scout speed to flank around to the back of the enemy while they're preoccupied with your team and meet at them. If they survive the hit they'll be knocked into your team. Then one of two things will happen. 1. Your team kills them, or 2. They kill your team. In both cases you have achieved your goal of not letting people have fun. Number 2, The Soldier. None of his primaries apply any status effects to enemies other than the Cow Mangala's charge attack, but that is impractical as it uses up 4 ammo. So we'll go with the Black Box, for its ability to heal you. And since we already have the Black Box, let's use the Conjurer to get its passive health regen and its Mad Milk-like effect, with the escape plan formerly to escape dangerous situations. This loadout focuses on staying alive and being unkillable to indirectly be annoying. <laughs> 3. The Pyro. The Pyro is an easy one the flog, for its famously low skill floor and how anyone can just pick it up and go on a 15 kill streak, and how you can get 10 whole seconds of guaranteed crits minus the duration of the taunt on a weapon that already has high damage output, for the ridiculously low cost of 300 damage. For the secondary, despite having a low skill floor and low skill ceiling, and just generally being the detonator but weaker, the Scorch Shot receives a ton of hate from players because of the AoE explosion, the knockback, and how it's easily spammed, so well use that. For the melee the Neon Annihilator is an obvious choice, because you can just kinda, Chill at the corner of a pool of water and waiting for someone to come, get wet and ambush them with a crit in the face. In fact, this strategy is so relatively common that it's basically a subclass with its own name, called the Pyro Shark. Anyway, when playing this loadout, flank routes and hiding spots are your friend. It's best played on the map 2 fort, because of the large number of water and flank routes. And hiding spots. You could hide in the sewers, wait for someone to come. Crit them with the Neon Annihilator and follow up with the Flog. Yes, I know the flamethrowers can be fired while underwater, but as long as the weapon itself is not, you'll be fine. The victim still won't suffer afterburn though, so watch out for that. After killing about 2 people, you'll have your MMMPH meter at max, and then you can just get out there out there and W plus M1.
for the Demoman. The primary weapon doesn't matter for the Demoman. As long as it's not the booties or the base jumper. For the secondary, well go with the quick ebum launcher for its damage bonus with charged up, and any melee. So what you do with this loadout is you find a corner in an enclosed space. My favorite place to do this is this basement in upward last point. You lay 5 sticky bombs on the ground in a curved line, with 3 visible from where the enemy will be coming from. The last 2 are curved to be along the wall. You put the last 3 sticky bombs on this wall, and run away to spawn and just stay there, staring at the sticky bomb count I'm pretty sure you can see where this is going, in case you can't. The plan is that the enemy will see the trail of sticky bombs, destroy the first one, the second one, the third one and see the fourth and fifth one. Now, because the corner is in an enclosed space, they can't just back away and destroy it from a safe distance. They have to stay pretty close. And the second we see that there are only 4 sticky bombs left, we detonate and hopefully kill the victim. I call this trap, the candy trail of stickies. Five. The Heavy, this is a very obvious choice too. The Thomas Love, the Sandwich and the Killing Gloves of Boxing. The idea is that you would kill someone with a KGB, get 5 seconds of guaranteed crits, and immediately pull out the Thomas Love, which is the quickest to rev up out of all minigans, and just obliterate everyone. The Sandwich is just there so you can throw it off a cliff or right next to the respawn locker or whichever place no one could ever find it and have more room to eat up more health kits. If that's not your style, you could always just camp, revved up right next to a health kit behind the enemy's lines and wait for someone to come. 6. The Engineer. The Engineer is the very definition of fun police. His iconic loadout, the Pomsen 6000. Short circuit in the gunslinger is famous for one word. SPAM! Get to a chocker point acker every square centimeter of dust bowl and just SPAM! SPAM! The Pomson, spam the short circuit alt fire, and spam menace and trees. I'm not gonna go into depth about the engineer because there are already countless videos on it, but I guarantee you that every enemy soldier, demo, spy and medic on the server will hate you. 7. The Medic. The Battle Medic loadout is just perfect for making people rage, especially your teammates. It consists of the Blood Soldier, the Crit Skrieg, and the Bonasaur. Now, you may have heard people say that the crossbow is better for the Battle Medic, since it can actually heal, and can snipe from across the map and be rewarded for it in the form of reverse damage for Lorf. But remember, we are not here to be useful to the team like any sane person playing Team Fortress 2 would. We are here to police the fun. Normally when playing Battle Medic you would equip the Quick Fix, to 1, heal if you have to, but quicker, and 2, you can latch onto a scout or a blast jumping expert to get to the front lines faster. But in our case we don't want to do that, even if it means we can get to the battle as fast, so we equip the Crit Skrieg because in case you don't know, its taunt actually heals you. Just by a little bit, but better than nothing. And the Bonasaur, since we don't need Uber and there for the ability to preserve Uber upon death, and certainly not the air taunt that leaves you defenseless just so you can heal some helpless losers who can't even be bothered to find a health pack. When using this loadout, it's important to know how far to lead your shots and compensate for gravity, as the Blood Soldier fires slow moving projectiles as opposed to Hitskin, which travels with infinite speed. And use the Crit Skrieg taunt like it's the Heavy Sandvik. They are very similar, because they both take the same time to consume. 8. The Sniper. For the Sniper, I think the most annoying loadout has got to be Machina, Jarrett and the Bushwicker. I like to use the tracer to get them to come to me, then coat them with Jared and crit with the bushwicker. Nothing complicated there. 9. The Spy. For the Spy, it's definitely Electranger. 
Stock Sapper, Stock Malay, Cloak and Dagger. This loadout revolves around staying out of sight, cloaked and periodically, kill someone with a backstab, and shoot a few times to try to get the enemy to look around for you, but they can never actually catch you, which makes this loadout really annoying to play against, because if they do take their eyes off of you they get backstabbed. <laughs> Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my content.